Mr. President, I know that I have uh, occupied a little bit of time here on the floor this afternoon with a wide range uh, of topics going from the tragedies that, uh, that face many of our uh, Indigenous women uh, to recognizing a, a, a prominent leader of the Alaska community. And now I'd like to share a little bit of Alaska's history as, uh, as we see a transition in, in uh, aviation and transportation. It's really uh, the end of an era in my home state. On October 18th of just a few days from now, Alaska Airlines will fly the final run of the uniquely Alaskan combi plane before retiring them and updating the fleet. So, we're like, okay, she's gonna make a floor speech about an airplane. Yes, gonna make a floor, a floor speech about an airplane because this, this combi plane is a special Boeing 737-400 designed to carry up to 14,000 pounds of cargo, 72 passengers. But it's called a combi because it's a dual use of planes. It's a combination of passengers and cargo. Alaska Airlines is the only major airline in the country to have these combi planes, and they were specifically designed for the special challenges of a very large state, and over their lifespan, they have delivered every imaginable thing via airplane in Alaska. Now, you've all heard me talk about the size of our state. The sheer size of the state pre presents logistical hurdles unlike any place else. I keep saying we're one-fifth the size of the country, 80% of our communities are not connected by road, but when you think about how, how we move around in our state, a postage stamp placed in the middle of an average sheet of paper represents an, the area that a person can reach in Alaska by coastline, uh, river, road, or railroad. The rest is only reachable by plane. You just have to fly everywhere. And this being the case, it only makes sense to try to efficiently deliver people and goods to hub communities in Alaska. So Alaska Airlines is looking to, to serve, and this is not a promotional for them, it's a recognition that they need to figure out how they move the people, how they move freight. And they reconfigured for aircraft to do this. And what makes these planes so special get to my prop. What makes the planes so special is that they can carry up to four large cargo containers. We call them igloos. So these igloos load into the front portion of the aircraft right behind the, uh, the, where the pilots are. There's a simple divider between the cargo then and the passengers. So you, you load the cargo up front, the passengers come up the back through a, through a set of steps, just like we used to do in the pre-jetway times. And, and so when you get in the aircraft, you load from the back, but your first, say, 17 rows of a, of a traditional aircraft would be occupied by the cargo. And if you have more cargo, if you're flying fish uh, out of, uh, from, from Cordova south, or if you're flying your Iditarod dogs that have been dropped in Nome and they need to get back to Anchorage and you need a lot of space for, for the animals, you've got flexibility to move back and forth. These planes have flown all over the state, up to Nome on the Bering Sea coast, along the Arctic Ocean, to the oil fields in Prudhoe, and, and most famously in the in the Milk Run area. The Milk Run got its name uh, because Alaska Airlines literally delivers the milk to the communities al along the way, as well as other foodstuffs, all manners of, of goods and passengers. Um, it's something that if you're from Southeast, we all know about the Milk Run. We all complain about the fact that it takes about five hours uh, to get from Anchorage down to uh, down to Juneau, if you have to go through Yakutat and Cordova and stop in each one, and, and uh, you know, that's just the way it is. You bounce down from 
Cordova, Yakutat, Juneau, Ketchikan, finally you, you hit Seattle, you run into your sports teams, you, families coming and going. But these are the workhorses that are not only moving the passengers, they're moving the groceries, they're moving the mail, they're moving the, the medicine. Um, they are moving it all. Now, when I say that uh, it moves everything, you, we've built up a little bit of, of history about how how things move around. We've moved cows. We've moved um, we've moved cars. The the picture that I like best was moving the the herd of Santa's reindeer. I, I think Santa was actually posed in this, but the reindeer were not. They needed to be able to to move the reindeer. So you haul them in the front, situate them, and uh, close it off, and you've got passengers in the back. So whether you're moving reindeer, whether you are transporting an injured eagle to the raptor center in Sitka, or letting again all of those sled dogs hitch a ride back to Anchorage after they've made the thousand mile trip uh, to Nome, this is, this is what we do. But what the invention of, of combi plane really highlights are the unique needs and the parameters of, of daily life in the state. We're a long way from the lower 48. You can barely drive to any of, of the communities, as I've said. And so if you're, if you're going to move goods, if you're going to move passengers, you're on an airplane. So whether it is essential air services, bypass mail, air freight, these are the backbones of, of commerce. This is, this, is our, this is our interstate. It's the interstate in, in the air. So whether we're shipping our our wild-caught, sustainably managed uh, salmon that people around the, the world love to eat. Um, we ship that out. We ship in the toothpaste, the loaves of bread, the basics that we need. And, and thanks to the Combi, we've been able to do this with regular, reliable, scheduled service uh, in areas where the weather would usually chase off, off more. But these are smaller aircraft, so they can handle it all. The size of a Combi allows them to land and take off in much more turbulent conditions than, than smaller propeller planes. So it's, uh, it's, as I mentioned, it's kind of a, a bittersweet time uh, for, for some of us who have grown up around these, these aircraft uh, as, we, as we think about the only in Alaska type things. It is encouraging to know that this development of, of uh, the retiring of the combi planes. The proposal is to replace them with separate full-size passenger and cargo planes. It's the result of increased demand for goods and, and passengers, so we need more space on planes to deliver both. So if, if updating the fleet means that we need and we get more business in Alaska, I suppose that's a good thing for all. But uh, there are there are many of us that are going to be bidding fond farewell come October 18th, which is the last scheduled um, the last scheduled flight for the Combi. It's also Alaska Day in our state, and uh, I'd like to thank Alaska Airlines and those who who fly these these great planes and do so safely and provide a, a level of service and have for so long. I want to thank them for what they have done over the course of so many years. With that, Mr. President, uh, I would suggest the absence of a quorum and, and thank the President.